Billy Sy here. I want to talk about vaccines. I'll include the reasons that I made sure my son had all of his vaccinations. But first, I need to give you some background information on the immune system. The immune system is the organ system that works to protect the body from diseases. Anytime you're sick, the immune system ramps up and fights off the disease. This is one of the reasons you feel crummy when you're sick. It's your body fighting the disease, not the disease itself that causes stuff like fevers. The immune system works better when your body is warmer, so your body will raise its temperature to help it. That's a fever. It's part of the body's response to diseases. But one of the main functions of the immune system is right there in the name to give you immunity to diseases. Being immune from a disease means you won't get that disease in the future. Part of the benefit of fighting off a disease is becoming immune to that disease in the future. After recognizing that you have a disease, the immune system makes antibodies for that specific disease. The antibodies stick to the disease or diseased cells and are flags to tell the other immune system cells where to attack. If that specific disease comes back again, the immune system already knows how to fight it and has antibodies ready so we can fight it faster. Fast enough that the disease isn't a problem and you don't get sick. So being immune to a disease means that your immune system can fight it very quickly. There are two ways to get immunity from a disease. The first one is simply by having the disease. But diseases are dangerous and sometimes can kill, so this isn't a good solution, especially for dangerous diseases. But this used to be a common way to deal with chickenpox. Chickenpox is more severe in adults than in children. Long ago, if one child in a family got chickenpox, all the other children would be put in close proximity to get them all infected. This way, they would acquire an immunity to the disease as a child. They couldn't get it as an adult and wouldn't have to worry about the more severe symptoms. The second way to get immunity is by being vaccinated. This way, you get the immunity without getting sick. So, just what is a vaccine anyway? Well, a vaccine is a small amount of weakened or dead germs that cause a disease. This gives the immune system a chance to fight off a disease quickly without you getting sick and then you have the immunity going forward. The immune system remembers this disease and is ready to fight it if it shows up again. Without the vaccine, being exposed to the germ can lead to the disease gaining a foothold in the body and you can get very sick. So, are vaccines safe? Well, vaccines are first developed in labs to make sure that they kill the desired germs and are safe. Then, small clinical trials with 20 to 100 people are done to look for side effects. Eventually, much larger trials are done. Each batch of vaccine is tested to make sure that it only has the weakened or dead germs in it, doesn't have any other germs in it, and some of the substances that are used in production are removed. Moreover, vaccines continue to be monitored after they're approved for general use to make sure they're safe and effective. Now, while most people can get vaccinated, not everyone can. The very young and people with suppressed immune systems can't safely receive vaccinations. These people 
don't have any immunity to the disease, and due to their circumstances, if they get it, they might die from it. By having enough members of the community vaccinated, it is very unlikely that a disease would be able to get to one of these unvaccinated people. But for this to work, almost all people in a community need to be vaccinated. Recently, measles has become a problem in some areas due to enough people avoiding vaccinations that the community isn't protected. When I was a kid, everyone got these vaccines and there weren't any measles outbreaks. But now, measles has returned a few times to the United States. I want to talk about another disease that you may not have heard of, polio. This was a very bad disease for thousands of years until vaccines were developed. Polio is a contagious disease that can cause rapid onset paralysis. Frequently, this happens in the legs, but it can also happen in the neck and diaphragm. It kills 2 to 5% of children who get it, and 15 to 30% of adults. Many polio patients lose the ability to breathe on their own due to a paralyzed diaphragm. They need artificial help to breathe. The solution was the iron lung a large cylinder that the person lays down in with their head sticking out. It's sealed around the neck, and a motor increases and decreases the air pressure in the cylinder. When the air pressure is decreased, it causes the chest to rise and the person inhales. When the air pressure is increased, it pushes the chest down and the person exhales. This is what an iron lung looks like. There's a mirror above the head so the patient can see to the side. Here's a hospital ward full of patients in iron lungs. These patients pretty much had to spend the rest of their lives in these things. In 1955, Jonas Salk developed a vaccine for polio. Look at this graph. In 1953, there were 35,000 cases in the United States. In 1957, that had dropped to 5,600. In 1961, only 161. You can barely see the line. Six years after the vaccine was developed, the rate at which people contracted polio was 0.46% of where it was before. Today, polio is so rare in the U.S. that we don't think about it at all. Well, doesn't Big Pharma make loads of money from vaccines? Well, they make some money, but that doesn't make vaccines bad. In 2018, the amount that pharmaceutical companies made from their top three drugs was more than what they made from all the vaccines they sold combined. So, they make some money, but not boatloads. If you're looking for how they could make more money, then vaccines are bad for pharmaceutical companies. One case of measles could make Big Pharma $56,000 in profit. The cost of one vaccine that prevents that? $21. But what about the side effects from vaccines? Well, all drugs have side effects. Most are minor, a sore arm or a slight fever that lasts a few days. Remember, you get the immunity by your body fighting off a very weakened or dead version of the disease. Fever is a symptom of your immune system building up its immunity. See this site for more information on side effects from the CDC. But what about mercury in vaccines?
first. The type of mercury used making vaccines is ethyl mercury, which is pretty safe and your body clears it out pretty quickly. Starting in 1999, they removed ethyl mercury from all childhood vaccines in the U.S. Some multi-dose vaccines and the flu vaccine may include ethyl mercury, but not a dangerous amount. The dangerous mercury is methyl mercury, which accumulates in the body. It takes over five times longer to clear out than ethyl mercury. This is the one that can lead to mercury poisoning. Methyl mercury is not used in making vaccines, nor does it appear in any vaccine. So why do I have to get the flu shot every year? And many people still get the flu anyway. After I get a flu shot, aren't I then protected? Yes, you are protected from the strains of the flu that the vaccine was designed for. But the flu virus mutates easily. Each year, there are new varieties of the flu. Scientists work hard to predict what versions will be most common this year and make the vaccine to protect against those. But these are predictions. Many times, there's a new variety that the vaccine isn't made for. Even so, being vaccinated can reduce the chances of your getting the flu and help your body fight off the flu, even if it's a variety that wasn't predicted. But don't vaccines cause autism? No. Even the Autism Science Foundation firmly says no. There are more kids being diagnosed with autism these days than when I was a child. And this has nothing to do with vaccines. We know more about autism now, how to identify it, and how to help the people with it. In the past, people who we now would diagnose as autistic would be given labels like emotionally disturbed or worse, but nothing was done for them. Since the diagnosis of autism has started to be used more, some parents have wanted a cause, a scapegoat. Many autism diagnoses happen early when the kids are getting vaccines. But just because the diagnosis and the vaccines happen around the same time doesn't mean they're linked. Correlation doesn't imply causation. All the autism brouhaha started from a study that was done in 1998 by former doctor Andrew Wakefield. He published a paper in The Lancet that suggested that the existing measles vaccine may cause autism. In 2004, it was found that Dr. Wakefield had failed to disclose a major conflict of interest. He had applied for a patent on his own measles vaccine. He was also being paid a lot of money from lawyers who were filing suit against the manufacturers of the regular vaccines. Other scientists tried to replicate Wakefield's work, but they couldn't find any link between vaccines and autism. Dr. Wakefield was stripped of his medical license and The Lancet published a retraction of the original work. All the vaccines cause autism myths come from this corrupt study. Here are some bad things from not being vaccinated. First, getting vaccinated does not improve the odds that a child will be autistic. Second, the person is more likely to get the diseases that the vaccines help prevent. And some of these diseases can kill. Third, if enough people aren't vaccinated, the amount of vaccinated people won't be high enough for community immunity to happen and more people get sick. This can mean that people who medically can't be vaccinated now get these dangerous diseases. Vaccines are safe 
and help prevent some very dangerous diseases. Have you had all of yours? Thanks for watching. Riley Sigh out.